Hey guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Deep Six, a game of galactic mayhem by Odd Grove Games. This is a two-player game, a head-to-head -head 1v1 game of, um, basically the remnants of a colonization after the mining corporation has left. Now there's just a bunch of goons and colonists and prisoners and that kind of thing, uh, all trying to vie for control of the area. You're going to be selecting one of the many different leaders in the game, whether it be this guy or this gal, and you're going to be placing yourself on this grid here. This is an 8x5 grid, which has the unique leader's faction on one side and the other unique leader's faction on the other. You'll start with a certain amount of health, and then you're going to basically begin. You'll be drawing cards from this deep six deck, playing down units, playing cards you can use later, or events might trigger as you go throughout the game. You'll draw cards, you'll use glyphs, you'll play events, and then you'll get an action. And if you want to play those, you can, and then you'll pass. And you'll go back and forth. Now, this is a prototype, so this is just one variant of the game, but there is most likely going to be more variants, whether it be a two-on-two -two head head-to-head or a uh, four-player co-op. Um, but for, for this instance here, we're just going to talk about the main prototype that I have and the main variant that we're playing with today. So let's get into the game deep six and talk about the setup, how to play, and of course my review. In the game Deep Six, the setup is quite simple. You're going to be making an 8x5 grid. And in the grid, there's going to be a main space for your leader and your opponents. So you'll be setting aside a grid of a 3x3 three three for each player in the 8x5, in the two corners. So you'll have a 3x3 three three for yellow and a 3x3 three three for black. And the rest of the spaces are unclaimed territories that will use these cards here. Once this grid has been set up, each player is going to choose a leader. Each leader has their own unique abilities as well as color and faction and a backside with actual actual additional actions as well. Take the ability card as well as a turn order card and place it in front of that player and then give that player their leader token. You'll take that token and place it in the middle of your 3x3 grid along with the large die that indicates the health of your leader. Both of these leaders have 13 health and so they're both going to get a die with the number 13 on the top side. The extra dice are set somewhere within reach of all players, and then each player should get a number of these tiles here. These are your area control tiles with different colors. They're both back and front, so you can interchange and use them as you need to, as need be. I'll go ahead and make sure that you have an equal number of those guys. Take the deep six deck and customize it based on the rules. There is a large amount of different deep six cards, whether they be leaders, events, units, etc., etc. Um, and you can go ahead and shuffle these guys up based on what it says and place it down within reach of all players. Uh, the rest of it is just going to be extra leaders and tokens that you may use on your leader or on the units in your deck that you're going to be drawing. This is a single deck so all players will draw from the same one and the actions are going to be the same for each of the players as to what you can do with unique abilities on your player or leader cards. After you've done this and set your leader's health to 13 then you can begin the game and basically whoever defeats the other opponent's leader first is the winner. Okay, so setup is over, now how to play the game. Well, it's quite simple. One of you will go first, that person is going to draw a card, and you can follow along on this turn order reference card here. Uh, first, that's action one, draw a card. When you draw a card, there are three types of cards. There are units, there are glyphs, and there are events. Units are what you will place down onto your areas, the areas of your color, to gain more areas uh, from unclaimed territories, to battle your opponent's adjacent units and gain, gain their, unclaimed, their, their claimed territories, and you'll also be utilizing them to defeat your opponent's leader. Uh, the glyphs are cards kind of like Yu-Gi-Oh trap cards where you can play them instantly So like as an instant in magic or Yu-Gi-Oh trap card where you can place it down and play it at a later date But you can only store three and then finally we have events these events are positive and negative what you draw is what you draw They could be good or bad, but those are the options that you can get so we'll just be first talking about uh, these uh, these units here. These units are the most important thing in the game, in my opinion. So if I draw one of these cards here on my turn as this character here, as convict number 0025684, I'll place my unit down on the space that I occupy or control, and I'll claim it with the character along with the hit point die. In this case, it's a 10 unit, which means it has 10 HP. And I will claim any unclaimed territories adjacent. Adjacent is omnidirectional, meaning it could be diagonally adjacent or up, down, left, and right. So in this case, I would get this space here, and this space, and this space, and this space, quite a lot of space. This is probably the best space to gain at the very beginning of the game. After I've done that, then my first action is over. I drew my card, I did what it said, and now I move on to action two, where I can choose to either do one of two things. One, I can play a glyph card that I previously had placed down, the Yu-Gi-Oh trap card, or I can activate my leader ability. 
This leader ability will let me kill any unit on my opponent's side of the field other than their leader, but it flips over and has to require a new cost in order to flip back. Or this character here is going to let me, when there are no unclaimed spaces on the board, I can claim four of my opponent's spaces adjacent to my territory and flip the leader to its back. But this one does not flip back, however there are cards and events and glyphs that may let you flip your leader back over. And that's basically it. If you don't want to do those two things or cannot do those two things, you will pass. And the next player will get their turn. And, oh, once again, another unit. Place the unit down. I'll take the number uh, based on what its health is, which is three. I can place it down and then I can secure some area. But in this, in this case, I'm going to secure area that is omnidirectional for this character. And as you can see, you start claiming new areas of the board. And this player would then pass, doesn't want to do a second action, and once again, another draw. In this case here, I could go ahead and place my unit down, a six. I'm going to gain another unit worth six HP. I can only claim untamed, unclaimed territories if there are any and if it's possible for me to do so. In this case, I would actually only get one because the other spaces are already claimed by either my opponent or by me. The only way I can actually claim my opponent's territories is by beating their units in combat or if I have no spaces left to claim. So for instance, if the board looks something like this and I had no other areas in which I could claim, even though there are areas left to claim, I am able to then place units down. So for instance, I draw another unit at some point in time and I place this unit down, I can then place its HP down and that will allow me to claim one space occupied adjacently that is my opponent's um, and I can convert it to mine. And because these flip back and forth, I can just simply flip it over and that will let me gain area. What about combat, you ask? Well, combat, let's say it's my opponent's turn and they draw seven. When they draw seven and they want to place the seven down, they can place it on any area they control and they'll place down the number seven and they will fight. Combat works like this. No matter how many units you're fighting, you're always going to fight the lowest value unit first. So the attackers will fight the lowest value unit first of the defender. My seven unit over here will fight the six unit over here because this one is a nine. This six will lose to seven. So this will go to the discard pile. I will lose all six points and my seven will subtract from six and give my seven now only one HP. When that happens, all spaces that are omnidirectional to both of the units, so in this case here, it'd just be these three tiles, are going to flip and I am going to control them. However, the fight is not over because there's another unit that is still adjacent to my unit, and that is the nine over here. The nine is then going to defend and defeat my one, and this card will go to the discard pile. This nine will turn into an eight, and when the defender beats a unit that is uh, coming from an attacker, they get the space of the attacker and allow this to flip over. Had my unit actually been able to defeat both units, I would actually take control of all the spaces that are adjacent omnidirectional to both this character and this character, as well as my own, which is gonna be all these here. Uh, and that's how combat works. The only thing else about combat that you probably don't know is how to defeat a leader. Well, it's pretty simple. Oh, look at this, I found a nine. I can take this nine, placing it on the yellow space when it's the yellow player's turn, giving myself a nine HP character, and look, it's adjacent to the leader. And it works just the same way in combat as it would with any other unit. I check the leader's HP, subtracting it from my unit, my nine will go to zero, and the 13 is going to go to four. And we're that much closer to winning the game. If this unit's HP ever goes to zero, then the other player will win the game. The other two different aspects of the game are going to be events such as a calamity where you'll have to discard all of your banked glyphs or maybe a glyph like possession which will let you when you draw it be able to select an opposing unit adjacent to your territory. This unit is now permanently controlled by you and you'll claim its territory and immediately enter combat if applicable. If you don't want to use it instantly you can bank it however and like I said before you can bank up to three. There's a ton of different glyphs and a ton of different events that can happen in the game and whatever you draw is what you draw. Will you be able to defeat your opponent's leader or will they stomp you and defeat yours? We'll find out in the game Deep Six as I talk to you about it in my review. So first things first is Deep Six has a lot going for it. This is an area control game but it's a very simple one and the complexities are minimal but they are there and they are present and making choices matters. When you draw a card, you're presented with one option and one option alone. It could be one of three options, but if you get a unit, you can put it anywhere you want. 
If you draw an event, it must happen. And if you get a glyph, then you can choose to either save it or play it right now. Some glyphs will be helpful. Some glyphs might not matter throughout the entire game. Some events might be helpful and some events might be terrible. All the units will range in power. They can range between, I believe, one and 10 power. A 10 power unit is very powerful, whereas a one power unit is basically useless. When you go throughout the game, you'll draw your card, you'll do what it says or choose to save it. And then you'll choose to play an active glyph that you have face down or your user, You'll usually use your leader ability if you can. Leader abilities are very strong, but because you cannot use them a whole lot throughout the game, you have to be very careful of when you use them, because once you use them, they're likely not going to come back. Although there are some cards that will let you do that, and some leaders that will allow you to flip. There's also units that have bonuses, the leaders specifically. When, like for instance, this character is utilized, the one that lets you take control of your opponent's spaces when there are no unclaimed territories left. This one also says that when this side is facing up, the strength of all these specific units, your little cog units, are going to be increased by plus one. And that is when the tokens come into play. These tokens will have a number of slots on the unit cards that they can be placed on. There's two on each of them. And when you place them down, you'll increase the pips of HP or or maybe decrease based on the different types of token values. There's like plus ones and plus twos and plus fives and so on and so forth. So when you draw an event card or a glyph card and one of those type of cards, you might be able to increase the value of your units, which can be very useful throughout the game. Both units and all the characters of all the units and uh, like, like all, all, all the leader units are quite powerful and they have their own place, but you have to be very careful with how you use some, some of them. Some of them are a lot simpler than others. While they're probably strictly sort of balanced, I would say that there's definitely ones that are easier to understand, easier to use, and ones that can gain you the advantage quite quickly. Deep Six is a quick game. This game takes between 15 and 30 minutes, and if you start playing and get pretty involved in it, pretty understanding of how the game works, it can be faster, and it can potentially be longer. That being said, this is a game of chance in a lot of ways. Drawing a card from your Deep Six deck and getting an event that's negative, your opponent then gets a unit that's worth 10, you then get a un an, a an event that's another terrible event, and then your opponent gets another unit that's worth nine. Now they've developed 19 points on the board, and you have gotten two negative events, which could te te technically be like a loss of a turn. Because you're also playing from a singular deck, you never know what you're going to get. Yes, everybody has an opportunity to get any of the cards in the deck, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be balanced in your favor. And so because of that, my preference for this game is that each leader uh, color would have their own unique deck. It's structured very similarly, and but but yet like balanced similarly, but different than the other lead units, uh, leaders of the different colors. But because you're playing from the same deck, cards that say something like rearrange the top two can basically give you an extra turn. <laughs> Whereas in your deck, it's going to maybe, maybe be able to provide you with a better turn later, but not actually affect your opponent. So some of the things I don't like about this game involve the single deck strategy. The idea of not knowing what you're going to get can be fun and probably really works for younger audiences, but I would personally like to see separate decks for each of the different characters, or if not characters, at least the different factions. One way you can resolve this, which I think works fairly well, is customizing your deck. Now there is a certain amount of customization that the rules explain, but I would even suggest throwing out literally all the ones and twos and three units and leaving in just the bigger ones when customizing this deck. What would be even better in my opinion though, is if each unit that has a lower power has some type of value. So for instance, if you draw a one, perhaps instead of it just being a one, whereas your opponent drew a 10 and a feels bad moment, Perhaps the one says that if you are the player that has the least amount of power on your side of the field, that one is now a 10. Or if you have a five, maybe it says it gets plus two as long as it's fighting two units when you place it on the board. Little unique powers like that added to the units will give it a lot more flavor. The characters will feel different and they'll feel powerful and you won't be really sad when you draw a one. But if you do draw one and you're already winning, it's not so bad and let your opponent catch up. That will still give an amount of randomness to the game because the game definitely has randomness, but a sense of fairness to where you don't feel one side or the other. If you don't mind this aspect though, where characters are just gonna pop up, you might get a good one, you might get a bad one, and this is not going to be a problem for you. But for me personally, I like the idea of having characters with unique abilities that based on what the board state looks like or how you place them, or how you maneuver them, gives you a slight edge to allow you to kind of come back from an inescapable death where your opponent has 50 points in the field and you just drew a one. Uh, other than that though, let's talk about the art. This art in the game is excellent. I love the different characters. I love, love the different leaders. They look good. They feel good. These characters work really well for the story. I feel like I'm kind of in this like facility trying to dominate, almost like in a paintball arena. Kind of reminds me of Adrenaline actually, where I'm placing units and trying to control spaces. Uh, that being said, 
you cannot control your opponent's spaces if you have the ability if you don't have if you have the ability to claim an unclaimed space that's there. Sadly, there are some spaces that you're never going to really want to go next to, but you'll have to just because you want to be able actually to move across the board even if you cannot fight. If you're fighting, it won't be an issue, and it just really depends on placement. There are these small little things I just wish like I didn't have to do because why do I have to do it? I'm not super certain. I'm sure there's probably a reason, um, but yeah, I would actually just prefer to give a little bit more choice in that aspect. Otherwise, though, the placements, the area control, the flipping of tiles, all that is really fun. It's clean, it's slick, and it works really, really well. The fact that I know what my units are compared to my opponents while still using these the, the same deck is actually very nice. I know that Callie's unit is this one here, not because of the card itself, but because of the space it's located on. And the same goes from my side as well. I also like the fact that I have the ability to kind of flip my character, my unit over, and it has some type of very powerful effect, and some of them that have a little bit of a weaker effect can kind of flip them themselves back over. I don't really know why the leader here on the board necessarily has a front and a back side. I'd probably never flip it if I'm being honest, but I do appreciate that. I'm sure some people will. Additionally, the tokens. Being able to increase the, and decrease the value of units is really cool in this game. I like the ability of this character having the ability to kind of increase those cog units by plus one or um, whatever that might be in the deep six deck that you might get to increase the value. I like it so much, I want to see even more of it. In fact, I wouldn't even mind if each player started with three cards at the beginning of the game. All the units you can simply just place down on your turn, and any events take place instantly, or effects that you might want to place down. It gives a sense of a little additional rush. It may even increase the game a little bit, which is not bad. This is a quick game. That being said, this is a quick game. This is a game that has a, a bit of chance in it. It has a bit of structure as to where you want to place your units. Making choices matters. When I played this game, not defeating an opponent's unit early on did affect me. And understanding the turn order and when you should be doing things is very important. And it can cost you if you're not careful. Love the idea of placing dices on the cards, all the art. Um, this is, of course, a full prototype, so there's a bunch of changes going to be coming into the game. There's going to be more modes than just a single 1v1. But for what's here, even if this game just stayed like this with just my changes intact, I'd really, really be into this game. As far as it stands, I like this game. It's a solid little game. It's fun. And as long as you're not like me and you don't mind extra random chance in a game, then Deep Six, the game of galactic mayhem, is definitely going to be for you. Overall, though, I suggest you take a look at the Kickstarter campaign. There will be a link down below in the description where you can go ahead and pick it up if you're interested. And I'm looking forward to seeing all the changes and additional things that come with the game Deep Six. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game. Well, I've said it a bunch of times, Deep Six. If you're interested, like I said, link down below in the description where you can check it out, whether it be the website or the Kickstarter campaign, just depends on when they start to publish the game on Kickstarter. You can also check take a look at my channel. There's other videos, our website, there's written reviews, and our live streams that happen all the time. Um, we have a Wednesday stream on whatnot where we sell games, we talk about games, all that kind of good stuff. And if you would like, you can go ahead and hit the subscribe button. If you watch more than one of our videos and you have appreciated them and you haven't done it yet, there's the button. Both of them. You can hit the bell button too. If you don't want to, you don't have to. I'd appreciate it either way. You can use ad block, I don't care. But if you like it, please continue to support the channel. Look, I even made a, a beautiful background for you guys. All right guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to defeating you as convict <clears throat> number 0025684 next time. <laughs>